Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. The time is now to act boldly and swiftly. Water is the opportunity for change. It is the leverage and the connector. Now the decade is a platform to bring these challenges in and collaborate together as a world and bring solutions forward. On today's program, we'll learn about the United Nations Water Action Decade. Victory to the people! As a result of this court case... And we'll profile two courageous environmental activists from South Africa, recipients of the Goldman Environmental Prize. Then, we'll see a music video of the song, Wake Up to Reality, by Alicia Grant. Monetizing all of our uh, assets, all of our natural resources, so to speak. Um, Following that, we'll speak with actor Pierce Brosnan, executive producer of the environmental film, Poisoning Paradise. After the presidential election, um, I was feeling very down. and. I'm an artist who um, experiences my feelings and emotions through my own work. After that, we'll interview immigrant artists who have come to the United States. Well, I think peace is a feeling that you have. In your Finally, we hear a personal message of peace from filmmaker and humanitarian April Walcott Wright. In March 2018, the United Nations launched the Water Action Decade. The purpose was to mobilize the international community with the goal of providing clean water for everyone within the next 10 years. Water is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. Whether it's frozen in the form of rain or clouds, in rivers, lakes, and oceans, water is around us and sustains us all. The water crisis is a global crisis. Water uh, is destructive in its power of too much, too little and polluted water. Overall, it's the vulnerable that are hit hardest by these water crises. UN Water, which, which means really all the agencies that work within UN Water, uh, we supported the, the Secretary General to develop the action plan of the decade. So UN Water itself will act as the coordination platform for all the different UN agencies. The, the decade really it's about inspiring people to, to do the right things to achieve the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal on Water and Sanitation. What you see here is waterlicht, water light. You can walk underneath it and then it tells you the story of water. When things went wrong, instead of responding to the disasters, we want to see that communities, governments, businesses and others are ready for these challenges. We want to raise water awareness and this really means increasing the understanding of water by doing research, uh, uh, working with communities, with youth, with academia. The time is now to act boldly and swiftly. Water is the opportunity for change. It is the leverage and the connector. Now, the decade is a platform to bring these challenges in and collaborate together as a world and bring solutions forward. In our next segment, we profile Makoma Lakalakala and Liz McDade two South African activists and recipients of the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize. These courageous women successfully mobilized their community to stop a multi-billion dollar nuclear power deal between the governments of South Africa 
and Russia. South Africa was the home to the grassroots movement that confronted apartheid and all of its horrendous consequences. Another powerful movement was born here recently that took on President Zuma and his plan to construct one of the most elaborate and expensive nuclear power projects in history at a cost of $76 billion. This deal was literally going to bankrupt the country. For us, challenging the abuse of power and protecting our constitutional rights, this is fundamental to the struggle we're raising against nuclear energy. When Makomale Kalakala, the coordinator of Earth Life Africa, learned from her counterparts in Russia that the South African government was planning a mega nuclear project, she decided to take the issue to the streets. Freedom of speech and freedom of association it's one of the things that we fought for during apartheid. So we've got all the right to be there. We've got all the right to raise issues. Makoma knew that Earth Life would need a strong partner to confront the highest levels of government. She reached out to Liz McDade, a woman with whom she had a long history. I think what is really nice is that in a world which has often been led by men, this was a space where two women could actually work together and we have the same sort of energy, same attitudes and the same value system. So we worked very well together. Every Wednesday morning, there's a cabinet meeting inside parliament and the minister and the president drive into the gates of parliament. We pray for honesty and integrity. So we decided that we would stand outside speaking truth to power. And we've done it since the announcement of the nuclear deal in 2014. Liz and Makoma soon agreed that they had one viable plan to try to derail the massive nuclear deal it was already signed between the Russians and the South African government. So in the public interest, we filed a case against the president of South Africa, against the Department of Energy and the Speaker of Parliament to say no nuclear energy should proceed without having satisfied all the legislative and regulatory processes. What we're doing now, it's not an isolated incident. It was quite scary because this is the Russians and the president of South Africa. And who are we? But from my perspective, that just makes me think, OK, I'm more stubborn and I'm going to fight it. If it's coming at us, then we're going we're gonna to beat them. In 2017, after two years of ongoing protests, vigils, workshops, lobbying and educational outreach, as well as mounting a court case against the government. Liz and McComber were successful in the South African High Court with a verdict that nullified the contract for the entire $76 billion project. Victory to the people! As a result of this court case, the people of South Africa have to be consulted. The Russian agreement has been set aside. We are saying the future is in our hands we are going to enforce yes. that this government invest more in renewable energy. That's the energy that is going to make sure that we don't destroy this planet. For Outstanding Environmental Achievement in Africa, the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Makoma Lekalakala of Johannesburg and Liz McDade of Cape Town, South Africa. We now join our youth correspondent, Geraldine Ramos, who will introduce an inspiring music video. And now we'll see the music video, Wake Up To Reality, a powerful environmental song.
Following the screening of Poisoning Paradise at the American Documentary Film Festival, we spoke to the film's executive producer, Pierce Brosnan, concerning the importance of making this film. Monetizing all of our uh, assets, all of our natural resources, so to speak. Um, I can't really speak to these chemicals. I don't think they're using anything that has to do with mercury or lead, but I will tell you that papyrophos is a neurotoxin. It's something that was banned during the um, administration the, of Obama, and it was supposed to be phased out almost uh, this year or next year, and that was overturned, as you saw in the film, by the current administration. Um, and the rest of them have been grabbed. In the late 1980s, policymakers in both Hawaii and Washington started conversations about making Hawaii a center of biotechnology research. They don't grow food in these fields, they experiment with seeds and pesticides. We have the highest number of open-air field test sites of anywhere in the nation. Chemical companies are experimenting in Hawaii using pesticides that are banned in Europe. The federal government has granted Syngenta and Pioneer the right to test pesticides here on this island outside of what the label mandates. They're exercising this corporate profit over the welfare of the people. Feeding the world was always a greenwashing of a technology whose aim was to sell more chemicals. Multinational seed producers use the county to research and develop new seed varieties. Basically, they're contaminating the land and they're going to contaminate the water and it's just not sustainable. They're just dumping copious amounts of poisons and chemicals next to our schools, streams, you know, all these waterways. Nobody knows what these chemicals will do to humans. They've never been tested. Nobody has ever proven them safe. Experimentation without informed consent is a high level taboo. We live in a world today where there's absolute conflict of interest between government and the corporations, and that conflict is never disclosed. Any technology which needs secrecy and hiding has already proven there's something wrong with it. People my age are really starting to stand up and they've done their homework. You can never really lose when you're standing with the truth. You would think from looking at these rebuttals that this was an isolated local group of activists creating problems. But the real truth is this debate about environmental toxins in general and pesticides specifically is raging around the world. It has been people's movements that have always changed the world. It hasn't been the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, or the Labor Party. It's been people recognizing that they are the ones who change the world. There you go. Could you give us what a environmental message? Just one minute. Why, why this film is important? Because we're going to be promoting the film. This film is extremely important because it's a land that we love. Thank you. Named Stairs. my wife, <laughs> Keely. Hi. She grew up in Hawaii. Thank you. I grew up in Ireland. Thank you very much. I love the countryside of life. I, I love the clean water of life. Oh, I love the environment of no beauty and landscape together. of beauty. And when you Thank see you. something Hi. that is destructive and having a caustic effect on a community, that pains you. So you want to ask questions and you want to know why we're doing this. So this film is important. Positive Spin recently visited Art Explosion Gallery during San Francisco's Open Studios weekend to hear the inspiring stories of immigrant artists coming to the United States. inspiration for your art and uh, the political influences from which you're expressing your art. Oh, my, my, name, my name is Jose Luis Rodriguez. I'm 
is Marcos Mion. I'm an artist from Argentina. Uh, I am living in San Francisco now. Uh, my kind of art is in a conceptual art. Um, I, I love to I like to explain uh, about social issues, about political issues. Uh, I use the newspaper. Um, introduce the newspaper uh, to improve my message. This kind of message is about the people, about the feeling of the people. Every time in the newspaper, the, the troubles, the bad news, I arrived one and a half years ago to America, to San Francisco. I arrived with my wife uh, because she professional opportunity uh, to, to improve uh, herself. Uh, for me, it was an, um, a challenge to, to improve my, my art and uh, to feel another culture, another, another more opening mind culture that expressed the, the feeling of the immigrant uh, when they come here and need help for the other people. And I, I felt like this when I come here and everybody wants to, to, to help others. We have to be uh, stand up and strong. And in, in, in Spanish, it, tenemos que ser unidos, tenemos que ser hermanos eh, y darnos una mano todos. Eh, y no solo hablo de el, los hermanos de Latinoamérica, sino de todo el mundo. Eh, all the world. My name is Mimi Herrera Pease, and I'm an artist here at Art Explosion Studios in San Francisco. Um, I have all these pieces in the show. And this piece, um, these two artworks that are a diptych, which are two artworks put together. And it was inspired by the 50th anniversary of the Summer of Love. My father was an immigrant Mexican, and um, he brought me culture. I was born in Mexico City. Uh, my mother's American, so I'm an American citizen. And as a child, I spent a lot of time in museums and galleries um, in Mexico and California, um, which inspired me to become an artist. So the, my background and its rich history and my ancestry um, comes through in my art. And without it, I wouldn't be the artist I am today. After the presidential election, um, I was feeling very down. and. I'm an artist who um, experiences my feelings and emotions through my artwork. My paintings were very dark, um, extremely dark. Um, however, I did participate in the marches in New York and the Women's March, and I felt a sense of renewal and that we can change things by our actions. And artists have a responsibility to um, communicate you know, politics and unjusts in the world through their artwork, whether it be abstract or literal. So I'm an abstract artist, so that's how it went for me. And then in terms of renewal, my paintings got brighter and lighter once I saw that so many people are on the same political playing field as me and wanted to stand up for their rights and said, we're not going to take it, and we're all together marching for, for a really good cause. Because what was happening in our country is wrong, and it continues to be. Hi, my name is June. Um, I'm an artist at Art Explosion. I've been doing art in the city for 10 years. Um, originally born and raised in China. Um, now, Finally, I landed in this wonderful, beautiful city, San Francisco, and I started my studio here. Um, to do art, it is something that I can only do, and I love to do, and I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> my son diagnosed cancer, and so I studied in and out of the hospital a lot, and I, um, during his treatment, I find out art is a great healing for a lot of cancer patients. So I started being the little canvas to um, the patient's room, um, help to help them to discover art is such it's such um, hmm, not just beautiful, inspiring. Um, 
take the mind off from this harsh treatment. Um, so now um, the program in the hospital, which is UCSF, it's called for Art for Recovery. Um, I'm, I'm working with them twice a week, um, bringing my art um, to share with them. My theme is never miss the sunset. That means um, I encourage them to one day they're gonna, they're gonna get out of the room. They're gonna go to the oceans and see the sunset themselves. So painting them in the uh, in the room will encourage them to eat well and and do well and get out of the you know, the hospital soon and live in a normal life and be happy. <laughs> We leave you with a peace message from filmmaker and humanitarian April Walcott Wright. is that feeling in your heart when you know you have joy, contentment, and guidance, and you listen to your heart. And if everyone listened to their heart, we would have peace in the world. Peace to everyone. Thank you for watching Positive Spin. This show is made possible through the generosity of the Patty and Jack Wright Foundation. Watch and subscribe to our previous episodes on YouTube, and please like us on Facebook. I'm Bill McCarthy. And I'm Jenilyn Ramos. Now it's your turn. Inspire. Empower your community. Create your own positive news. Positive news.